All right, so now inpatient treatment. And I want to focus really the rest of the talk on the inpatient treatment because this in a lot of ways is the most challenging because really here are where the data are the thinnest. So here we have very nice FDA approved trials. We know that the drugs are used. We kind of use it as an analogy to what we do in Crohn's disease. Uh, on the inpatient, and you even saw with some of the questions, some patients start 10 milligrams per kilo in the sick patient. You know, when do you stop? Do you go down? Do you escalate? It's a little bit of the Wild West sometimes in terms of what we're doing. So we just try to rationalize through it and try to make good choices. So where are the data and what are we talking about? So first of all, we know that the sick patient who is in the hospital, the first thing to realize is that their probability of getting surgery within the next 30 days, I mean, let alone in the next week, but in the last 30 days is actually quite high. So the first thing is that the patient needs to understand that um, you know, surgery is definitely in the horizon. So what are the indications? For the acute patient, it's fulminant, toxic megacolon. Those are obviously uh, more clear. Massive bleeding, perforation, that kind of makes sense. Now, a lot of the patients are not doing well. I mean, th those are kind of no-brainers. Um, here, failure of medical therapy, um, you know, uh, stenosis, um, you know, patient basically not responding to treatment. That's where the challenge is. And this is where I think we can actually make an impact. It's not so much that we can use and, you know, we're kind of gutsy enough to kind of use a high dose of Remicade on a patient. It really has to do with timing. And so this is really what I want to emphasize in the last part of the talk. And if nothing else is, is taken away, is really just realizing that we really try to practice time-limited um, treatment in terms of deciding and pulling the trigger onto whether a patient needs to go to surgery or not. The fact is that the decision to go to surgery, no one's ever going to thank you for sending them to surgery. And if everybody remembers back to medical school, just like the surgeon's knots, they were always too, too long or too short. They were never quite right, you know, if you're scrubbing in. Here, you either, you either sent the patient to surgery too early or too late, right? You're not going to be congratulated for what you, you avoided in retrospect. So this is kind of where we have to have courage and, and practice um, kind of time-limited uh, IBD care in the inpatient.